Welcome to my talk about motivation today. Before we dive deep into the topic, I'd like to give a short introduction of myself. So, because you might ask yourself, who's this guy and why is he talking about motivation, right? So, let's start with what I'm not. So what not to expect from me. I'm no psychologist. I'm no life coach. I won't shout at you. No worries to, to motivate you in military style boot camp. Um, and to be honest, I've not even read many books about the topic motivation. But still, I believe I have a relevant track record about the topic. So. Give, let me give you a few examples of my, my life and myself. So with around 10 or 11 years old, there was a new neighbor coming into the neighborhood and he ran every morning. Like, I think it was at six o'clock or something before school. And I just decided, okay, I'll join him every day. Raining, snowing, no worries. I'll be with him, right? Nobody told me to. I just decided I want to, and I did it for quite some time, actually. A little later, I think five years later or so, I went to a school which was not directly in the neighborhood, but um, a little farther away. And there was a bus. I used it from time to time, but most of the time I went by bike. To be honest, it was not even fun at, at some points, but I still did it. And I didn't think much about it, but it seems like I was motivated just like that. So I, at that time in a younger age, I never thought much about motivation, but later on I became a coach in sport I got also leading roles in, at work and the company and motivation became a more central topic for me. So I started asking myself, why are you doing stuff? How can you maybe motivate others to do stuff, right? Or to, to feel better about doing stuff at least, right? And um, I kept um, thinking about the why. So the theory looks quite simple. If you look it up at, uh, at Wikipedia, you come up with something like a need that requires satisfaction. In short, you just want to do something, right? But yeah, that sounds simple, but finding that why is not that easy. So I'd like you to take half a minute, a minute maybe. You, if you want, you can share it in the chat with us and think about something you're doing regularly. Maybe you even enjoy it or not, <laughs> you decide and share the why with us. So what motivates you? I won't wait now for your answers, but, uh, but I want to share my why um, with you. So for me, the biggest why I could come up with is improvement. So I really, really enjoy getting better and seeing the progress. Seeing results, making visible what I achieved, that's, that's really great for me. And I think that's a motivator for, for a lot of people. For example, if you think about IT people, if I speak to them, a lot of them are enjoying actual manual work, building something with wood or whatever you can come up with, something you can touch and see and show around. They are really liking that because we are working in the IT and there is a lot of virtual stuff going on. And most of the time it's even um, difficult to explain what exactly you're doing, right? And seeing the results on the other hand for, for a manual thing you build, that's, that can be great and very, very nice and very motivating. 
So if you think about improvement and and um, and goals, uh, thinking about progress and improvement, you uh, end up with goals. But in my opinion, goals is something very tricky. I'm not saying you should not have them. They are actually very important, especially if you're thinking about smart and everything, making them very measurable. But goals can be tricky in the sense that first, they should be very, very ambitious and they can be very demotivating if, because you have this very ambitious goal and it will take you years, maybe you will never reach it. And if you don't, you will be get demotivated. And that's, the, that's counter to what we want to achieve to get gets us moving and motivating us, right? So you have to be careful how to interpret your, your goals. They are great if you, if you use them like, okay, I uh, use them for making my progress visible. Having this goal I can measure and then working towards it and seeing after a while, oh, I've gotten better in, in a certain aspect. And this is motivating. But um, goals tend to, be in the, tend to be very in the future. You're always running after your goal and achievement of the goal actually will only be a very, very short time. And then you're again hustling after the next goal, right? And for motivation, you need something in the, in the now. And this is actually my, also my next point I came up with, what motivates me. It's fun. Because I strongly believe if you are not enjoying what you are doing, you cannot really be motivated long term. So enjoy what you are doing. The process there. The quote I put here is live in the present. So this is actually the counterpart of this goal and always hustling after the goal. You have to enjoy the progress, the improvement, getting, getting there, right? This was uh, actually key or is a key factor in my motivation always. You can go without fun. Um, I would say this is then discipline to still go on but it's quite taxing. It needs a lot of energy and it does not go for itself. You can do it and you have to from time to time, sure. But um, having this fun involved is always better if you can find a way. For example, if you say, okay, I want to get better endurance, but I don't like running really much, but I, that, that's the way I want to go. Find something to mix your running up, right? Go running, but listen to a podcast, listen to an audiobook or something which you might enjoy, and then you have always something to look forward to. My last and third aspect of my motivation are habits. So this might not qualify 100% as motivation, to be honest, but in my opinion, it helps a lot for achieving goals and then coming into this motivation. So you have to go... You have to come to a point where you're, not, uh, where you are not questioning the starting point anymore. It's just clear Wednesdays, six, five, six, seven o'clock, when, whenever you finish work, you're not going to the sofa or whatever. You're just getting to your next task you want to do, reading a book or whatever. It's just like a habit. And um, so you can overcome that starting step, which is always the hardest. And it makes things uh, just so much easier because in most of the cases, once you started, you will continue, right? And this is actually especially powerful if you have something um, you cannot make that much fun. For a lot of us, it's probably cleaning the house, for example. You probably enjoy living in a clean house, but cleaning it is most of the time not so much fun, right? But um, having this habit, doing it um, regularly, then you can overcome this first step, then the cleaning might be not that bad because it goes over fast and then you can enjoy again the outcome and, and get the motivation out, out of that. Priorities, very, very important um, in my opinion, if it comes to motivation. Because what I hear a lot is I have no time right? I would like to do this or that, but I have no time. And you know what? It's totally fine to have no, no time for something. 
what I think it's not okay is to not making that choice deliberately. So you can have time for everything you want, but you have to prioritize. You cannot ha have time for everything at once. So you have to make a deliberate decision. What is the most important for, for me? And this I, I'm doing and for that I make time. For sure, those priorities will change from day to day, from yeah, month to month or something. So maybe work has a higher priority. If you have a little child that has probably decided your priorities um, for you, but um, it's important in my, um, in my opinion that you really take that deliberate decision about for what you want to have time or not. Next point, motivate others. So I told you already, I became a coach and also like leading roles in the company. And there it is very, very important that you can motivate other people. So if, you, if you're looking at, into other people, the example coming to my mind is always coaches at the, at the line on a track, right? You have this running track, they are running in circles there and the coaches at the, um, at the peri perimeter there and uh, shouting stuff to the athletes. And if you listen closely, they won't do the typical cheers normally. So what you might hear from those coaches are things like you are perfectly on track, five seconds faster than you should be, two more and you're on the podium and or you look very good, very good, very relaxed, super cool. And what they are doing is they are making the progress the athlete has and their situation visible to them. To motivate them for sure there are also tactical aspects about those um, those shoutings on those cheerings but also a big um, big part of that in my opinion is to really motivate them so okay I wanted I have trained that much for so um, for so long and now I'm only two places I have away from my goal to get on the podium or something and this, there we can learn a lot from, from coaches because you can actually do the same in your, in your project. Don't shout at your colleagues. No, that's not it. But you can use the same technique. So you have to trigger motivation. So you have to find the goals of your, your colleagues and make them aware of, your, of their progress. Um, for example, you are in a long running project over half a year, a year or something, and you are halfway there and you are in a complete mess, so much work ahead. And, so, and you, you see, okay, motivation is quite going down. Everybody is tired and stuff. So, and it might help to just making them, them aware of what they achieved. So um, taking some example back, maybe you have some screenshots or you have some slides from the very beginning of the project and just show them, look where we are coming from. It was, we, we had nothing and now we have already this, um, this working or that sorted out. And that really triggers motivation in, in my experience. Or you can also make the task more fun. Um, we heard from, from Gerhard before, job rotation. So you can do this not only changing the project, but you can do that also within the project. You can say, okay, we have maybe this type of tasks nobody really likes to do. So it's not only the one guy always taking it up, but we have many people and just rotating those tasks so everybody can do the, do the cool stuff from time to time. A next point in motivation, I really believe in is responsibility. So giving ownership to the people in your project or around you really, really helps because it will involve them so much more in the results. And what I said earlier, like results motivate people or, or progress. But if you have not taken any decisions coming to that progress, uh, leading to that progress, it won't mot motivate you so much. Um, so much. It will motivate you so much more if you know, okay, I have taken a decision 
um, which led to this progress or this, this success. And um, this, this really, really helps to identify with the results of a project. And, but it can be scary as a leader, I have to say, because you have to let them decide and they 99% will not decide as you um, would have, right? But um, you have to you have trust in them. And after you overcome that fear um, and see, okay, they, the decisions might be different, but um, they are leading also to, to create success. And if the people are, have the responsibility, they won't take ba bad decision or they will also work hard if some decision were turned out wrong for the one reason or the other, then they will work hard and be motivated to, um, to fix it, right? So already the summary of my short um, introduction to my motivation and how I see that. So find what motivates you or others. This is really the key part. And um, I really want to encourage, re encourage you um, search for that, what motivates you and is fun for you. And try to create an environment you are more motivated and have more fun because it will not only help your success, but also your health and everything because um, work won't feel like work anymore. Um, and that's also one of our goals at NetCentric, right? Um, have fun, that's um, the same, but a little bit different angle. You want to mix it up. You want to mix your stuff with um, the things you enjoy. Having habits, if you have something you have to do and you know it's always hard starting, try to create a habit out of it. Choose your priorities and choose them wisely. So, and choose them deliberately, uh, most of all. So not let not decide somebody else what your priorities are, but try to, to modify them and to decide of them on your own. And always have the have your why in mind. So thanks a lot for listening. And um, we will post a chat uh, in the chat uh, link for feedback. And um, so all feedback is welcome, either, either directly or via the, via the link. And um, yeah, enjoy the summit and have a nice day.